Chapter 47 Lancaster, Connecticut, July 4th, 1937 They walked along the trails heading southeast from the Adler House toward Route 41. Tedford Collins kept his feet as close to the edge of the cliffs as possible. The sense of danger excited him. One misstep, and it was a long fall into the woods below. Ted rotated between leaning over the edge, balanced on one foot, and walking quickly to catch up with Tim. Tim Adler didn't pause to play or wait. He was a boy on a mission. His steps were purposeful, his expression worried. He held a bunch of wildflowers in his left hand. He gripped them so tightly most of the stems were broken. His small fingers bore green plant blood. He barely felt the sticky liquid as it dried in the summer heat. Ted caught up to him again and matched his stride. It wasn't hard. Tim was a foot and a half shorter than Ted, even though they were both 14. His brown hair was sporting a crew cut. His dark eyes were worried. Ted looked at his friend's concerned stare and shook his head. Tim was in it deep. He was in love with a pretty little girl named Emma Fitz. Ted knew that since the fourth grade, but it was only last year that Tim mustered the courage to ask Emma to be his steady. Emma didn't answer him right away. She told him she needed to discuss it with her parents. Ted thought Tim would die of anxiety the two days he waited for her reply. He was nervous and jumpy. He couldn't concentrate on his schoolwork. Tim was very organized and studious. It was torture. Emma gave him his answer in due course, but it wasn't what he expected. Ted remembered the color draining from Tim's face when she told him her father wanted to meet him. Ted walked with him that day, too. They were best friends. They shared everything. They spent more time with each other than with their families. It was tough sometimes. Tim was a direct descendant of one of Lancaster's founders. Ted was the only Negro for 30 miles. Lancaster may not have been a racist town, but it had its share of bigotry. Tim befriended Ted without concern. It cost him some of his friends, but they weren't much for friends in the first place. Ted was courteous and honest. He was smart, too, unlike the stereotypes Tim learned as a young child. Ted wasn't a liar or a thief or murderous or anything like that. He was just Ted, and he was Tim's friend. Tim didn't care if anyone understood that. He did. That was good enough for him. Ted looked at him as he walked along with his flowers. Tim was a good person. Ted figured he must be too, to inspire such loyalty from someone with the world at his feet. She's going to be all right, Timmy, Ted said. He tried to sound confident, but it was a front. If what they heard this morning proved correct, it would be the opposite. I'm not sure, Tedford, Tim sighed, gripping the wildflowers tighter. You saw the look on my mother's face. She was scared. My mother is never scared. Tedford. Only three people in the world called him that. His mother, his father, and Tim. Ted took it in stride. Being afforded some respect was nice. It was better than what other people called him. He was the Negro boy. That Collins kid. Teddy, a name he despised. Tar baby. And sometimes even worse. That was few and far between, and usually in anger. Ted knew how to deal with that. It was like his father always told him. Believe in the word, Tedford, Buster Collins said. He was always chomping on a cigar when he said it. And the word is Jesus Christ. He beat temptation. He beat the devil. He beat death. And in Jesus' name, boy, anyone ever treats you as less than a human being... You beat the shit out of them. It was the only time Ted ever felt obligated to fight. Being treated as subhuman was blasphemy against his heritage. He was a man, not a color. 
He was moral, honest, and faithful to his friends. Didn't they know how much blood was spilled for people to win the right to be recognized as human beings? Of course they didn't. Jews were slaves once too, and even Christians got persecuted. Death and darkness existed throughout human history. Ted couldn't abide by the need to keep his race down, even after slavery ended. That was the boiling point. That's where his father gave him permission to vent his rage rather than keep it bottled up inside. The word was in him, but if someone decided he was less than human, Ted had a cure for that. Do you really think Emma's okay? Tim asked. Route 41 was below him. Ted put his hands on Tim's thin shoulders. If she ain't, he said, I'm with you, Tim, every step of the way. Tim looked into Ted's dark brown eyes. I know you are, Tedford, he whispered. You're the best pal a guy ever had. You know that's right, Ted nodded. He gestured with his head toward the road. Come on, let's get a move on. Your mama said Emma should be back from the doctor by now. She spent all day and night in the hospital yesterday, Tim frowned. He turned toward the path that led to Route 41. His stride widened to make up for the time he lost by stopping. If I had known about it, I would have been there with her. They wouldn't have let you, Tim snorted, like they could stop me. Ted shrugged. He was probably right. Tim was the nicest person he knew until it came to Emma. When his mother walked into the house 20 minutes ago and announced Emma was hurt, Tim pitched a fit. His mother barely got to tell him she was thrown from a horse into a stable post before Tim was out the door. There was more to the story. Ted saw it in her eyes, but Tim was already upset. She either didn't want to fan the fire, or she couldn't get the terrible news out. Emma's condition remained a mystery. She was alive, though. That was worth something. Tim crossed Route 41, headed for Lead Sinker Road. The Fitz family farm was there. Emma's father, Brian Fitz, raised chickens and horses. He was a light-hearted man with a shrewd business sense. When Tim and Ted went to the farm to meet him for the first time, he gave them a tour. He spoke while they walked. His pleasant voice held great authority. Brian said, I run my family like I run my business. Attention to detail is the key. I like things in order. Tim found him sensible, with fair expectations. He wanted Tim to promise he would treat Emma with dignity and respect. His concern Tim and Ted might be hooligans was unfounded. The Fitz family and the Adlers may have lived in the same town, but Brian didn't socialize. He hardly knew his neighbors and didn't subscribe to local gossip. He lived a quiet, private life with his wife and daughter. He intended to keep it that way, even if his daughter had reached the age where boys drew her attention. Brian called them a necessary evil. Tim was accepted and welcomed until he heard Emma. As long as he never did, Brian promised to treat him like family. Tim and Ted followed the long dirt driveway past the horse pasture into the Fitz's front yard. The driveway was lined by sparkling white fences that hemmed in two acres of land on either side. Ted paused to watch a cream-colored mare lazily grazing in the field to his left. She was a fine-looking animal. Her carefully groomed coat shined. Her muscular legs rippled as she moved from one tuft of grass to another. Her name was Maple. She was Brian's oldest mare and his favorite. She didn't breed any longer, nor did she ride, but she had the run of the spread. There was something noble about her. Ted got a fluttery feeling in his stomach whenever he looked at her. Maple glanced over as if sensing his stare. She blinked at him, chewing another mouthful of grass. Her eyes locked. Maple snorted. She seemed satisfied she was in good company and resumed eating. Ted smiled. His friend was at the front porch already, lightly knocking. Ted ran and caught up to him just as Brian opened the door. I knew you'd come, Brian said to Tim. His expression was drawn and tired. It was apparent he hadn't slept. 
There was deep sadness etched in the lines of his weather-worn face. His dark eyes seemed darker from the bags under them. Emma's out back, Brian sadly said. She needs you, son. He lowered his gaze. If you really love her, today's your chance to prove it. Is she all right? Tim asked, suddenly afraid. Brian's gaze never left his shoes. Let her tell you, he replied. He pushed his dirty blonde hair back. He looked at Ted and then Tim. I'm not sure I can. Brian walked past them, headed toward the barn. He left the front door open. Ted assumed it was an invitation to cut through the house. Tim's face was pale with worry. Ted held up his finger. Don't sit here yakking with me. Emma's the one who needs to hear your voice. Tim walked into the house. Ted followed him past the living room into the kitchen. They saw Emma through the window, sitting in a lawn chair in the backyard. She had her back to them. Ted reached out for the door handle, but stopped when he heard a woman weeping. He thought it was Emma. Tim leaned toward the living room. A hall beyond led to the bedrooms. The sobbing came from there. Tim felt dread. Her mother's crying, he whispered. Ted opened the door. Let's go, Tim. Enough of this lollygagging around. His face was stern. He pointed in Emma's direction. Get out there where you belong. Tim walked out the door apprehensively at first. His steps became more determined the closer he got to Emma. Ted followed, but kept a discreet distance. He was there if they needed him, but this was a private moment. He got close enough to hear them. If he didn't, the suspense would have driven him crazy. Tim slowed his pace as he neared his girlfriend. She hadn't moved yet. She was sitting up, holding her knees, her forehead resting on them. Her long, blonde hair hung lifelessly over her shins. Tim was sure she knew he was there. He wasn't sure why she hadn't acknowledged him. It scared him. Tim swallowed and asked, Emma? So you came, Emma said to her knees. She didn't look up. She didn't move at all. Part of me didn't think you would. She was angry. It caught him off guard. He took a step back and looked at Ted, unsure what to do next. His eyes filled with tears. He held them back as Ted shrugged. He gestured for Tim to talk to her. Tim frowned. Ted scowled at him. He jabbed his finger at Emma, demanding his friend get on with it. Tim sadly said, of course I'm here. You're hurt. Where else would I be? Emma laughed and threw her head back. She looked up at the sky with tear-stained blue eyes. She hugged her knees closer, staring into the distance. It was a hard gaze. Tim was more afraid of her than for her. You haven't heard what happened yet, have you? Emma asked. Her expression darkened. Tim felt the heat of her anger. My mom said you got thrown from one of the horses, he replied. His hands nervously clenched behind his back. There was a brief silence. He looked worriedly into her profile and asked, Are you okay? Emma turned toward him, a low flame in her eyes. No, Tim, she replied. I'm not okay. Her glare burned into him. I'll never be okay again. Tim's strength crumbled in the face of her anger. He fell on his knees next to her chair and grabbed her hand. He held it to the side of his face as his emotions broke free. He sobbed and shook. Emma stared at him. Slowly, she pulled her hand away and wiped his tears on her blouse. Tim looked confused and hurt. She was keeping him at a distance. He didn't understand why. What's wrong, Emma? Tim sobbed. I was so worried. Please, tell me what's going on. 
Emma looked back at that point in the distance. She took a deep breath and let it whoosh out. She shook with emotion and closed her eyes. What do you see when you look into our future, Tim? She asked. A single tear ran down her cheek. Do you think we'll get married someday? Tim stifled his emotions and wiped his face with his sleeve. It's all I dream about, Em. He whispered, If you'll have me. If I'll have you? She asked. She burst out laughing again, holding her stomach and rocking back and forth. Her laughter gave way to weeping. Emma looked into his frightened eyes. The forlorn expression on her face made Tim's heart break. He sat next to her on the lawn chair. He hugged her as she wept, gently stroking her soft blonde hair. He detected the smell of the hospital's disinfectant lingering on her clothes. He kissed the top of her head. She hugged him back. She settled into him, resting her face against his chest. Her tears subsided, and she eased Tim away. He stood up, unsure of what to do or say. She pulled her father's handkerchief out of her pocket and wiped her eyes. Her expression turned cold. I was riding Daisy, Emma began. She spoke clearly with little emotion. You know the mare, right? The one my dad said no one would ever be able to ride? Tim nodded. I know her. He was going to sell her to the slaughterhouse, Emma whispered. Her disposition was so bad, no one wanted her. Tim squatted down and folded his hands between his legs. How did you end up riding her then? Emma snorted. I thought if I could break her, Dad would change his mind. If she went to the slaughterhouse, she would be glue, Tim. I was trying to save her life. Tim swallowed hard at the anger in her eyes. What happened? he asked. He tried to take her hand. She pulled it away from him. She started to buck as soon as I got on her, Emma said. It happened so fast. She gritted her teeth. The next thing I knew, I was flying. She threw me, and I came down on one of the fence posts in the riding pen. She patted her stomach. Tim winced. That must have hurt. Emma shot him a gaze of shattered glass. What did I say? Tim asked. He held his chest. He felt his heartbeat slamming beneath his ribcage. Emma pulled up the front of her shirt, just enough for him to see the dressing tape to her belly, stained with blood. You got cut? he asked. The doctors cut me, Emma whispered. She looked him boldly in the face. They took out my insides, Tim. I'll never have babies, ever. Emma wept again. Tim felt awash with dread. He looked at Ted, his hands shaking, his face bleached white. Ted held his hands over his mouth as silent tears ran down his cheeks. Tim threw his arms around Emma. He pulled her close and held her tight, his mind whirling. His fantasies and thoughts about the future burned. He didn't understand. How could this be? His emotions overflowed with anger. It's not fair. Emma's the one for me. I know it. I've always known. We'll never have children? Ever? He heard Brian's voice in his mind. If you really love her, today's your chance to prove it. Tim took a deep breath. I love you, Emma, he said. You'll always be my girl, no matter what.